Good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks to the Heritage Council for inviting me here to speak. So uh, I'm going to bring you along a little story about the work I did last year on Denny Street in Tralee. So just to give you an idea, Tralee being the capital of Kerry, and uh, Denny Street being the capital street, in my opinion, of Tralee. <coughs> so this is what the street looks like. Um, it is directly perpendicular to the town's main medieval core street. Um, the buildings on the street um, date from roughly about 1820s right up to modern day Muse development. Um, there's the Ash Hall at the very end, which is one of the first buildings uh, built in the formation of the new state. Um, and just a cross section of the street there for your information. It's a beautiful street. It's set in a parkland setting, uh, right next to a huge town park. Um, so it just has a huge potential. Now the street forms part of a wider designated conservation area, which is the map here on your right hand side. So there's the street right in the middle. The town park is the big open space near it. Um, and it is also has a lot of protected structures on it, um, most of them given regional rating under the NIH. So that's the kind of setting. So protected structures, part of a wider conservation area. Um, back in 2012, my time in Trudy Town Council, I did a management plan for the area. So that was there as kind of a guiding background tool. Jenny Street and its position within town has always been part of the action. So just excuse my enthusiasm now for a bit of history, but just bear with me. Um, this is the 1756 Charles Smith's map of Trilly Town, great resource. Um, you can see the castle. When the Denny's came to Trilly in um, around the 1580s, um, they came to the main Norman castle of Trilly Town, which at the time was occupied, the stronghold of the Earl of Desmond. Poor old Earl got his head chopped off in the 1580s and the Denny's moved in here. They never left. So the castle was in the centre of the town, next to the square, the courthouse, the jail, market house, all within real close walking distance, and of course the church as well. And then the views, the mountains, and the castle domain. Now in the 1740s, the Denny's changed the castle. Okay, it was burnt down, it was reoccupied, burnt down, reoccupied during the wars and stuff. They kept coming back, they kept rebuilding, which I find fascinating, that they didn't take the opportunity to leave the town and go to the countryside. But in the 1740s, they reorganised the castle, they changed the town's rivers, and then they made good use of the castle domain and the beautiful views to the Schliebenich Mountains to the south. Now, I got this map recently. It's from the Denny family papers. They're living in England at the moment, and I got my hands on this, so this is just, I couldn't resist to put it in. So that's, this would have been fantastic to have had, you know, to go through all the details and stuff. So anyway, Mr. Denny also had this picture with the dimensions taken in March, um, no, November 1824. This was what was left of the Norman Castle just before it was demolished. The family decided in the 1820s to leave and go to England. And this, which you can't really see, is the survey map that was done at the time. And again, fantastic. All the details, people's names and stuff, who lived where, the coach house and bits and pieces. So this is current day Denny Street. So, like most of you know, they built to an agreed plan, 19th century developers, and it was also the first time in Trulli Town that we had a planned street, and we also had the rise of the Catholic middle class. They were most of the developers for Denny Street. So your typical kind of plot pattern, 26 feet to the front, 160 feet front to rear, layout of the carriageway, the paving, the details, the windows, the usual things. And I suppose I went through this um, with people um, just to try and explain how these streets were built, that these were the 19th century developers of their time. So this is just to give you an idea of the actual street. Um, very typical three-storey, three-bay for the most part. Um, pitched rooms, railings to the front, lovely limestone and steps going up. Um, rear gardens um, and access to the rear via two laneways. So uh, the Heritage Council, in collaboration with the Trilly Chamber Alliance, the County Council carried out a Trilly Town Centre health check back in 2017. Critical issues raised during this process, I suppose, for Denny Street were uh, the vacancy rate, um, particularly long-term vacancies. And I would have done studies in Denny Street, and some of those buildings are empty for more than 10 years. So that's very worrying, particularly during the boom time that they never actually managed to get a, a use. Um, typical conservation issues, long-term sustained lack of investment, lack of, just lack of knowledge. Um, 
the use, there were only two homes left in the whole street, and again, typical for these kind of buildings, they would have had ground floor uh, commercial use back in the day, and then upper floor residential, only two homes left, and they're both elderly ladies, so um, an obsolete office space. Lack of connectivity to the town. It's in the middle of town. There's a tiny little little signpost saying the town park at the end. And I suppose the laneways are uninviting. There's a bit of antisocial behaviour. They don't look great back of house, you know. So um, these were all the kind of the main issues facing it. This is something that I said. Um, I, suppose I was in Edinburgh just before I did the seminar, and I was walking around Edinburgh city centre one night, and I can't. Oh my God! The lights are on upstairs, and you have people homes, children playing in the ground floor rooms of these houses, Georgian houses, and I realised that I had become so used to seeing our towns, villages, not mind the cities, empty at night, lights off, you know, and how shocked I was that I was shocked to be in Edinburgh seeing, oh my goodness, you people living in these places, why shouldn't they be? So this was a quote from a transition year student, I did some workshops with um, to transition years in, in Trilly Town, and like, Nice little buildings, but there isn't much going on down there. I learned so much about how they view Trilly Town, the street, and how it works, and things that are very obvious to children that we just don't think about or <coughs> don't even take on board. Now, also, Denny Street is in the context of a wider, a smarter travel investment um, for the town, about 1.7 million. So there's a lot of um, change happening, I suppose, with the immediate town centre and Denny Street being part of this. So, um, thanks to Alison Harvey, she bullied myself in the train chamber um, alliance to apply for the Community Heritage Grant Scheme, um, which we did. And she was fantastic, absolutely brilliant. So, who was involved, basically? It was run by the Chamber of Alliance, and I gave a lot of support. So, it was, it was primarily um, geared towards owners of Paris of Denny Street, the wider Tralee business community, town centre residents, they were brought in. Then the Heritage Council, that you had various stakeholders, the Tashkin, Kerry Archaeological Historical Society, SEAI, Trilly IT. Then agents, I asked auctioneers, architects, engineers, anybody that I would have had dealings with um, to do with buildings in town to come, obviously the County Council, even like colleagues and stuff coming, like they got a great kick out of it as well. So Tidy Towns, grants recipients of Built Heritage Investment Scheme grants. Structures of risk people, anybody to do, even if they've no link with Trilly Town, brought them in as well. And um, the Trilly Town Centre, Health Check Team, County Museum, and then anybody, everybody else I could think of. It's basically, so come on, it is. So we had um, workshops with the TYs and Trilly Schools in May. They were absolutely fantastic. So I got to talk to them about the heritage of their town, their architecture, ask them to look up the next time they walk town town and even if one of them looks up and sees something cool up high be brilliant so the main findings in the ty's they were real obvious but quick wins murals and use of color and i think then okay we've planning issues and we have maintenance issues and who's going to run it or what about the insurance but they just run straight to the the good ideas improvement to the park facilities one lad said to me oh i'm 16 and i'm not allowed into the park because there's nothing there for us anyway and the guards move them on because there's a child's playground and they've nothing, there's nowhere for them to go. And I'm like, we are designing in problems and we're not even realising that these 14, 15, 16 year olds, they're doing nothing except hanging around with their phones chatting, but there's nowhere for them to go. And we have a huge town park, we're disgrace. Um, laneway upgrading, developed tourist, tourist initiatives, youth facilities, like one of the things they were saying was during the Rose Tree Festival, why not open up some of the buildings in Denny Street, get the landlords to allow people up, or have some of the, you always know, have farmers markets, craft stalls, that kind of thing, why not bring them into Denny Street? And like, real simple things, but quick wins then. And this is the kind of stuff they gave me coming out of their, um, out, out of the workshops. Like, they have their iPads in the classrooms nowadays, and I don't think I'm that old, but I was amazed. So they come out and they have this stuff downloaded and they're giving you stuff in email, they're printing it off. And again, it's all colour, and it's really importantly for Trulli, where it's nearly always wet. <laughs> now, I think of Kenny did this, so anyway, I'm sure we can do it better. Um, and again, like, you take selfies of this stuff, you paint these wings on the, mirror, on the, on the laneways, and you take your name of your town and stuff. And I suppose listen to Simon Ball as well, talking about trying to promote Westport and the PR side of it. Again, people put Trulli and they take selfies and they pass them around and, you know, even the use of colour. You know, whether you like it or not, I know it's a subjective thing, but just 
brilliant and open-minded. So we had a seminar in June. It was booked out, which I was really surprised about. I was kind of concerned that nobody would be interested or turn up. So um, very good kind of positive response. Um, we had five speakers at the start with a break and with workshops, and people during the break were asking, come on, we get going again. So I was thrilled. Like five speakers in the morning is, is, is heavy going. So Alison Harper spoke on town centre management and I suppose gave a context about how we manage our town centres and why the importance of, of heritage led regeneration. I suppose also the context of the town centre health check that was done in Trinity Town as well. Um, speaking from Scotland, um, Jim and Lawler, trying to look at making a connectivity between the street and the wider town centre. Um, something really basic, as I said, the Abbey Hall, which is the home to the County Museum, is based at the end of Denny Street. And now we start having our own meetings in there. You bring people into the street, even just <coughs> go to the coffee shops in the street afterwards. You know, those kind of small things. Um, then I wanted the seminar to help provide practical um, um, information, I suppose, for building owners and anybody involved in conservation. So it was just a small booklet produced about the do's and don'ts of conservation. Real, some real basic stuff, you know. So there are copies of it down at the end of the hall there, everyone wants to have a look. Brought in the fire officer. This was a huge learning thing for me as well. Um, as part of it, we've done a couple of um, site inspections, myself, the fire officer, and building owners, about how we can even manage our own challenges between myself and fire. And, you know, the, it's a huge part of people trying to get these buildings occupied is they come in, they get planning, we're delighted, of course, yes, great, zoned, mixed use, off you go, and then they get stuck. And it's time, it's cost, and if we could do it from a pre-planning point of view, it's, it's a no-brainer. So as I said, that was very, very helpful. Um, simple things like, I was speaking to some of the girls in the department, and they said, look, provide the, the advice series. They all went, people were delighted, with it. They, they went away with stuff. And again, I had somebody in Kilgarden who got money from us to do uh, <coughs> heritage works. He had a great time at this. He, he learned loads. And even to pick up the phone and say, oh, yeah, you know, I was looking there, now the cast iron down pipes and sure we ran to hold on to those, rather than automatically, <laughs> rather than automatically fighting PVC. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's at this level and it, it worked. So I was all delighted when this Kilgarden went. So anyway, um, again, went through conservation grants. Okay, we advertise with the website and we talk to people during the year and I keep the list and all that. But at least to tell people there is money there to do up these buildings, come in and look for it. You know, and just try and promote that it's not all such a bad negative thing. And then I had a great time then, I was talking with Queen Elizabeth and <laughs> Mr. Denny Man and all that and kind of, most people kind of stayed with me which was great. Told them the narrative of the street, which again was something that Alison was talking to me about, was tell the story, you know. She had got the whole Queen Elizabeth and who the Denny's were, and they were all hanging around with the royals in England. I thought this was great, and kind of going, why are they going to, to Tralee? Like, why Tralee? These people were like the bedchamber of King Henry VIII, kind of stuff. Anyway, so <laughs> went through all the buildings, um, and basically had this stuff up on the wall. Now, excuse the graphics, I'm not ready to do this stuff. But I gave a description of every building on the street. What do the old maps tell us? So basically went through all the old maps I could find um, and explained as well if you had a garden or that you did this and that and you had access here and you had lobby the railings or whatever the case was. And then I went through the directories as well in terms of who lived there. And people were really interested, like, what's a stay maker? And luckily I'd looked it up so I knew, but just, <laughs> well, you just again it gives them a kind of a story and people go back to well, the 1920s or 30s, but this was 19th century stuff and well, there was always a doctor in your house, and people found that cool, you know, and so I enjoyed that as well. So we've workshops then afterwards, so brought people up into groups and stuff, and these were the kind of the main five themes. Um, and there were similar themes to what I had done in, um, with the TY workshops and stuff. So um, we produced, as I said, the advice manual for building owners, then I did the feedback reports, basically collated all that information from the workshops went through all the themes and all the questions, broke it down into basically the workshop, the, the seminar at the adults, then I did the TY stuff. I can see there are more clocks around the town in Lincoln, so they all ring out at the same time. You know, have a, have a mural train around town. Some really, really good stuff. Serious things then from the adults, we looked at finance. So look, um, 
pilot project to refurbishment building and really I'm trying to move this so that it's not just a plan sitting on a shelf. I really, really, really am trying to get good examples of how we can actually do this. Like, I'd have a lot of landlords now who'd be in their 80s. They're not kind of, but they turn up. They're invited and these people turn up and they don't turn up to things usually. So the audits and um, trying to regulate, integrate regulatory planning requirements. Again, that's as much about us coming together at the start in terms of pre-plannings, uh, the grant system, please use the carrot, not the stick, incentivize owners. So again, the grant stuff is very helpful for that. Land use, I'm gonna fly now because I'm under pressure. Um, so increase football, footfall, change the use of music buildings, getting the older community in. You know, maybe they're not suitable at the moment for families, so maybe the older people, we have a truly IT. It is wide open for younger people as well. The narrative, so, Tell the street story. Uh, street improvements, like the laneways, they're wide open for, for being done, so I'll talk to you now in a second about that. The idea of creating truly simple things, but they'd have a good impact. How to maintain momentum. Somebody said to me at the seminar, let's celebrate the success, we keep going. It was booked out, and people standing in the aisles, and everybody was enthusiastic, which was really, really good. So, on group, going progress. We've set up a heritage conservation group. So again, people come, they turn up, I run out of seats, they're interested still, which is great. We formed um, a sustainable energy community. We're going to try and um, bring more as well as funding towards the streets, so we're going to provide an energy audit. So again, people have bought into that, it's done, it's happening. Laneway, laneway mural design is underway as well. So we're bringing in the second level students, third level students, to the tidy towns the Chamber Alliance and the County Council all feeding into this. So it's kind of cool, you know. Um, and some of the things like events program for the Tralee Town Park, yoga in the park. So um, they had the Heritage Week talk. So myself and Helen and Carol, curator of the museum, looked at the people behind the street. So didn't do too many maps or other things. but um, And that was really, really good. Some of these Denny's were really well connected. The women were really well connected, so that was kind of cool as well. Uh, this is what the street is looking like. Uh, that was about last summer. So it um, started to look really, really well. And again, there's huge local interest and a surge of pride in the street, which is happening. So I'm trying to kind of roll with that and keep it going. Now I'm from Cork, right? So, um, <laughs> but like, wouldn't it be great, you know? If, um, and again, just, uh, just to finish, this is where the Rose Tralee comes out. You know, it's Denny Street. This is where this kind of crack happens. It is the centre of people's minds, I suppose, and it's such a huge part of our society in town. So um, I just hope it keeps going. So thank you very much for your, your attention.